Hi guys. Now, those of you who follow us on social media might be wondering why I have this on the table. Well, all will be revealed. However, the gun that we're looking at today is not this. It's very different and very tiny. We're going to need some unnecessary zoom on this, or rather necessary zoom in this case. I'm sure those of you who've ever played Battlefield 1 have immediately recognised this as the Calibri. Calibri with a K. Now, this was invented by Austrian... Franz Fanel, Fanel with a P, uh, which is silent, if I, if I grasp my pronunciation correctly, and I hope I do. And this was patented in December 1910. And the patent is actually, or patent, is very interesting. So we're going to deal with that at the end. So quickly summarise, let's quickly summarise what exactly this is and how it relates, perhaps, to the infamous video game depiction. It's a tiny, tiny little blowback operated pistol. The slide is a sort of half slide arrangement. So you would insert the magazine, which I'll show you in a minute, pull the slide back and let it go. And it is therefore uh, chambered and cocked. And <laughs> up close, you'll see the tiny little firing pin, well, striker really, protrudes out of the back of the gun when it's cocked. I tried to dry fire these things too much, but then when you pull the trigger, it's actually a little bit like a Glock trigger mechanism in that it cocks it the rest of the way and then lets it go. Uh, I mentioned the magazine. Now, this, this is where um, reality first um, runs into Battlefield 1, as it were, or the other way around, because the magazine catch, when, when we have these reload animations in games that are very slick, well, you, you cannot slickly reload this. Now, this is from a period when Fast reloads, tactical reloads, emergency reloads were just not a thing. You might carry a spare magazine if you had a fighting pistol, like a 1911, for something, well, not like this, but for like a pocket pistol for purely self-defense. Again, you might have a spare magazine on your person. You may just rely on the rounds in the gun. And during the typical engagement that people anticipated that sidearms were going to be used in, reloading was not a priority. Let's just put it that way. And the same is true of the Calibri. So we have a heel style release, push down on that, and then you have to kind of get your fingernail <laughs> under this uh, little disc here to start to pull it out. Or you have to adopt a very strange grip and push with your thumb to then be able to grasp and pull out the magazine. And then we have this very cute little, fairly conventional looking pistol magazine out of the gun. So you load that up with your absolutely minute rounds. Now I'm afraid, although we have two boxes of uh, Calibri rounds, they are safely stored in our um, ammunition collection well away from the firearms. So I, I can't show you those uh, right now. But you can get an idea of the size of the round from the very tiny size of the magazine. And there are photos online of the rounds. It was essentially a miniature, it almost looks like a 9mm or 380 round, but slimmed way down and shortened way down. Absolutely tiny. 2.7 millimetres, or at least the, the bullet is 2.7. Uh, you'll come across the round described as a 2 millimetre Calibri, which is a very strange bit of rounding. I'm not good at maths, but normally you'd round up. Anyway, calibres are a strange thing anyway. So that's, that's the gun, except for the one control on the side, which is a tiny little safety lever, which does work. I can confirm. And it is marked S-U-R and F-E, and there is actually a U there, but it's hidden under, on this one, it's hidden under this side uh, plate, um, which is a, a separate side plate, by the way, that can, can be removed. And that is, that's actually French. So though it's Austrian and the, the patent is written in German, uh, the markings are in French. So for, for, for fire and S-U-R for sûreté, for safe. Interesting quirk there. Perhaps somebody uh, can explain that to me at some point. Sighting is, I was going to say non-existent, but that's not strictly true. There is a little gutter rear sight on the top of the slide. Is this the smallest self-loading pistol ever produced? As far as I know, it is. Um, we can always throw in the word production just to qualify that, because there are always people out there making ingenious things, including tiny guns, and there probably is uh, some sort of homemade design out there that's even smaller than this. Now, an important thing to say about this thing is 
I'm going to say it. It's non-lethal. This, this thing, I mean, I guess you can kill people with anything, with the proper amount of force, but um, I think trying to hit somebody with it probably, would probably be more effective. This 2.7 millimeter diameter projectile weighed three grains, which is, I mean, even if, even if you're not au fait with um, grains as a measurement, uh, you know, a typical pistol bullet weighs what, 115 grains. So yeah, tiny and very light. So although the velocity was on the order of 660 feet per second, which for an old school Victorian revolver would certainly be lethal, that's because that's shooting something like a 38 or a 45 caliber slug. This is, this is punting out a tiny little three grain micro bullet. So no, not, in my view, not lethal. Might scare someone away, but that's not generally the idea of, of a self-defense firearm, which is what Fanel was pushing this as, or at least as far as I know. The, the intended market was women's handbags, as, as far as I can gather, which is just bizarre because, you know, unless you don't like your, your wife very much, I don't think you'd want to arm her with this. It's also very interesting that that seems to have been the marketing angle because if we look at Fanel's actual patent, that's not really what it seems to be for. At least that's definitely not what the patent is for. The patent is for manufacturing and the gun is almost incidental to that. It depicts the Calibri, absolutely does, but all of the content is about how you make one or any pistol frame because that's what it's about. And it's not evident from looking at this, but the frame is actually a sheet of steel bent into shape, into a U-shape, and then uh, to reinforce it and give it, give it the outer form, if you like, you're looking at little block, tiny little blocks of steel to fill it out, if you like. So it's like a sandwich design, and the, the slide rails fit in a little block, or are, are a little block that fits in the top of that. Have a look at the patent drawing. So I think that's interesting in itself that this wasn't patentable, but the manufacturing system was, or concept was. And that's funnily enough where the Calibri gets its only real relevance, at least to military history. And that's because that patent is cited by the guys who patented this thing, the MG42. Fairly famously made out of, or the receiver at least, is made out of a great big sheet of steel, folded into shape. Not in the same way as the Calibri, admittedly. That, that was very much a design for a pistol frame. But nonetheless, um, that, that pattern that is for the body, the receiver of the MG42, directly references or, or cites the Fanel patent. So a, a fascinating little bit of historical relevance for a little novelty pistol that is really a footnote uh, apart from that. So there we are, guys. The Calibri pistol. Yes, I suppose I am flexing rather by, by showing two of them. Um, I don't remember there being a dual wield option in Battlefield 1, but yeah, that would make it even less useful. So you, you probably do know it from, well, at least from the internet, if not from Battlefield 1. You're not going to be able to operate it, pinching it between two fingers. The real thing was completely impractical and non-lethal, and perhaps its real historical relevance comes in being a weird sort of semi-ancestor of the infamous and much more lethal MG42 machine gun. Thanks very much for watching, guys, as ever, and thank you for your patience this time. We did have a gap uh, between the previous and this video, so thank you very much for waiting for what I hope is some enjoyable material. If you'd like to check out our social media, uh, well, you might like to, because this video series is connected to the posts that you'll see over on Facebook and Instagram. We're also on Twitter, and we have real-life museums you can come and visit. Uh, we're still open at the moment. Have a look at the website for details of where and when to come and visit us. I hope that you do. Um, if you'd like to donate to us or become a member, those details are in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.